Today, the University of Waterloo Faculty of Environment's Ecology Lab will be going over how to use the Shrubs of Ontario key to identify a shrub. This field guide has been digitalized and is available for download or preview online for free. Check out the description of this video to access this book. Here's the contents of the book. The introduction has useful information and is worth reviewing. In the beginning of the book, the ranges of the different hardiness zones are defined, along with plants you could expect to find in these different regions. This also can be helpful to review. If you come across some terms that you don't understand, check out the glossary that begins on page 483. To begin identifying, we will start at the keys for the identification of shrubs on page XXI. On the next page, we will find general keys. The first step to use the key is determining which of the four keys you need to start in. This book divides shrubs into four artificial categories based on the leaf type, which can be either evergreen, meaning the leaves persist in winter, or deciduous, meaning the plant sheds its leaves in the fall. The leaf arrangement is the next thing we will need to know and can be alternate, opposite, or world. The leaf type can then be simple or compound. A simple leaf is just one single leaf on a leaf stalk that attaches to the twig. A compound leaf is one that is composed of smaller leaflets on a leaf stalk, then attached to the twig. The way to tell them apart is by looking at what is attached to the woody twig. You can also tell by looking at the buds, which will always be on the main twig, never on the leaf stalk. Also note that compound leaves can be palmate or pinnate like. It is important to know what is a leaf and what is a leaflet when determining the leaf arrangement as alternate, opposite, or world. Key one is for species with evergreen leaves, including conifers with persistent needle-like leaves. Keys two, three, and four are for species with deciduous leaves. Key two is for species with opposite or world leaves. Key three is for alternate compound leaves and key four is for alternate simple leaves. Here is the shrub that we will be identifying. You can see that it has alternate simple leaves, which will bring us to key four. We will now read the first option in this key. A, leaves deeply or shallowly cut or lobed. The segments or lobes blunt, rounded, or sharp pointed. We will then have to find the next option A on the next page leaves not lobed. You can see that the leaves of this shrub are toothed and lobed, so we will go with this first option A. We will then go immediately below this to the next option B, trailing, scrambling, or climbing vines. We will then find the other option B, shrubs or trees. You can see that this is not a trailing, scrambling, or climbing vine, and it is rather a shrub or tree. Note the upright branches of this shrub. The next option, note that the options will not always follow an alphabetical order. Rather, always read the option immediately below the one you have selected for your species. E, leaves palmately lobed, or E, leaves pinnately lobed, or of three different shapes and margins entire. You'll remember that palmately refers to one common point, like fingers coming off of a palm, whereas pinnately refers to an elongated axis, like lobes coming off of a pin. In this case, the lobes are palmate. The next option, F, stems unarmed, or F, stems armed with thorns or prickles. You can see that the twigs of this shrub have no thorns or prickles, so we will choose the first option, F. Our next option, either G, stems slender, creeping with low upright branches, one to three decimeters high, leaves few, reniform, with rounded lobes and shallow sinuses, flower solitary north of 48 degrees north, or G, stem stout, trailing, ascending or erect, up to three meters high, leaves numerous, not reniform, the lobes blunt or sharp pointed, flower several to many in clusters. Our stems are stout, ascending or erect, taller than one to three decimeters high, and the flowers are also in clusters. So we will choose the second option, G. If you weren't sure, you could flip to page 235 and check to see if this matches our species. Here you can find a description, map, and sketch, and we can see that this does not match our species, so we will continue on in the key. H, leaves large, 10 to 20 centimeters across, stems and petioles, usually clammy with glandular hairs, calyx lobes, 
called eight tipped flowers three to five centimeters across or leaves smaller three to ten centimeters long stems glandless or with a few scattered glands calyx lobes not caudate tipped flowers less than one centimeter across here you can see the leaves are less than 10 centimeters long and the flowers are less than one centimeter across so we will go with the second option h our final option j low to medium sized shrubs usually less than one meter high stems sparingly branched the bark close or if peeling the inner bark exposed Flowers variously colored, solitary or few, short-stalked in auxiliary or lateral clusters, fruit a many-seeded berry, or J, tall shrubs up to three meters tall, stems much branched, with conspicuously peeling and persistent papery bark. Flowers white, numerous, long-stalked in showy terminal clusters, fruit a papery brown pod up to one centimeter long. Although this shrub is kind of at its maximum size, it is not three meters tall and does not have conspicuously peeling and persistent papery bark. And the flowers are not white. You can see that the stems are sparingly branched and that the flowers are solitary or few on short stalked and auxiliary or lateral clusters. Once again, we could go to page 193 and confirm that this species, nine bark, does not match the species we are looking at. You can see that the flowers look very different and reading the description, this does not match our species. So we will go to Rebes on page 130. Sometimes after completing one of the first four keys, the result will be a genus. This will bring you to a keys to that genus where you will have to go through the key further to get down to species. The first option, A, stems unarmed, or A, stems armed with spines or bristles, sometimes only at the nodes or on new wood. We will look again and see that these stems are unarmed and have no spines or bristles. B, blade of leaf mostly more than 3.8 centimeters long, broad or roundish, but not fan-shaped, with many coarse teeth, flowers less than 12 millimeters long, not spicy fragrant, or B, Blade of leaf mostly less than 3.8 centimeters long, fan-shaped, entire, or with a few teeth at the ends of the lobes, flowers more than 12 millimeters long, bright golden yellow, spicy fragrant. The leaves are mostly more than 3.8 centimeters long, are broad but not fan-shaped, and have coarse teeth. The flowers are also less than 12 millimeters long, so this means that we will choose the first option B. C. Stems erect, leaves resin dotted, at least beneath, berries black. Or C. Stems reclining or straggling, leaves not resin dotted, berries red. You can see that our shrub has erect stems that are not reclining or straggling, and the leaves are resin dotted. Note it can be helpful to bring a hand magnifying glass whenever identifying plants. Option D. Leaves copiously resin dotted on both surfaces, flowers and fruit in drooping clusters, Floral bracts persistent, longer than the flower stalk. Or D, leaves mostly resin dotted only on the lower surface. Flowers and fruit in erect or ascending clusters. Floral bracts shorter and deciduous. Both surfaces of these leaves are resin dotted. The flowers and fruit are in drooping clusters. And the floral bracts are longer than the flower stalks. So this brings us to Rebus Americanum. Here we can read the description and look at the map in sketch to confirm that this is our species. So here's a different shrub that we will try to ID. Starting again at the general keys, you will notice that this shrub has simple alternate deciduous leaves. This will bring us to key four. The first option A is leaves deeply or shallowly cut or lobed, the segments or lobes blunt, rounded, or sharp pointed. Or A, leaves not lobed. You can see that these leaves are lobed. Our next option is B, trailing, scrambling, or climbing vines, or B, shrubs or trees. You can see that this is a shrub or a tree and is not a trailing, scrambling, or climbing vine. Our next option is either E, leaves palmately lobed, or E, leaves pinnately lobed, or of three different shapes and margins entire. You can see that these leaves are palmately lobed. 
F stems unarmed or F stems armed with thorns or prickles. Looking along multiple stems, we can see that there are no thorns or prickles. So we will go with the first option, F stems unarmed. G stem slender, creeping with low upright branches, one to three decimeters high, leaves few reniform with rounded lobes in shallow sinuses, flower solitary, north of 48 degrees north, or G stem stout, trailing, ascending or erect, up to three meters high, leaves numerous, not reniform, the lobes blunt or sharp pointed, flowers several to many in clusters. You can see that this shrub has stems that are stout, ascending or erect, up to three meters tall, and with leaves that are numerous. Although this shrub does not have flowers, we do not need to see flowers to identify using shrubs of Ontario. H, leaves large, 10 to 20 centimeters across, stems and petioles, usually clammy with glandular hairs, calyx lobes, caudate tipped, flowers three to five centimeters across, or H, leaves smaller, three to 10 centimeters long, stems glandless or with a few scattered glands, calyx lobes not caudate tipped, flowers less than one centimeter across. You can see that these leaves are smaller, within three to 10 centimeters, not 10 to 20 centimeters. So we will go with the second option, H. J, low to medium sized shrubs, usually less than one meter high. Stems sparingly branched, the bark close, or if peeling, the inner bark exposed. Flowers variously colored, solitary or few. Short stalked in auxiliary or lateral clusters. Fruit a many seeded berry. Or J, tall shrubs up to three meters high, stems much branched with conspicuously peeling and persistent papery bark. Flowers white, numerous, long stalk, in showy terminal clusters. Fruit a papery brown pod up to one centimeter long. You can see that this is a tall shrub with branched, conspicuously peeling, persistent papery bark. Turning to page 193, you can see that this matches the species we are looking at. Thanks for following along and best of luck identifying shrubs.